come to this happy place. Welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we thank you for the so today on Miles from Main Street, we are talking about dining. I've got my fiance here with me, and we are going to talk about the things that we just recently went through with booking dining and deciding on dining and just kind of a general like park to park how we attack dining. Uh, Kristen, are you ready to go? Yes, let's do it. I'm so excited to be on the podcast again. Great. So um, most recently, uh, we actually uh, on the recording of this podcast, we just uh, booked all of our dining. Um, I woke up at around like 4.40 uh, here in Wisconsin uh, and um, just kind of like sat up and waited for all of the dining to uh, appear. Um, for the most part, if, you, if you're going to do it the way I did it, where you, you book everything out 60 days in advance and you wake up um, like as soon as you can start booking, for the most part, you're going to have um, like the pick of the litter, like you're going to be able to like book pretty much everything that you want to. Like I had absolutely no problem booking all the things I, I wanted to. I did notice that, um, we're, we're going for around like eight days. So like those last two days was like, like all bets are off. Like, like I could literally get anything. Like there was a whole bunch of like space two twenties, um, on like the last two days of our trip, like wide open. Um, we got Space 220 Lounge. Uh, we're pretty excited about that. But um, that's kind of something to keep in mind is that um, if you've got a reservation that like you have to get like on on the trip that you're going on, make sure you're looking for that reservation on like one of the last couple of days of your trip and then make that one first because um, most likely, depending on how many days that you're staying, you've got an upper hand on people who's... Um, uh, on like people who are just starting to book on that day. So, uh, something to think about, but yeah, I, I did find that interesting that just like pretty much everything on the last two days of our trip, um, it was open and was available. But anyways, um, on this trip, we decided to do things a little different and we don't really have any crazy extravagant sit down restaurants and we did that I mean for both like money wise and just kind of like like we can't be doing California Grill like <laughs> every single trip um, and so that's something uh, interesting that we did we were kind of mindful about the types of places that we were going and making sure that we weren't booking um, super expensive places as much as as we have been in the past um, but basic basically what we were trying to do is we were trying to focus on um, things like snacks and like other like like more like quick servicey uh, places and so we really didn't book that many places on this trip uh, but we do try to kind of like move it around and try to experience things we haven't experienced uh, the one that I'm really excited about is um, sci-fi dine-in um, that, that one I'm pretty excited. I think that's what I'm the most excited about on this trip. Um, and we're, we're eating at places like Steakhouse 71 and, and stuff like that. But I think that one's the one that I'm most excited about. So I guess we're filling you guys in on all of our secrets for our upcoming trip. <laughs> we are going to Disney in 60 days for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Um, and just with going to that party and it being Halloween time, we're trying to take it a little bit more easy with the dining. Um, like Kylo said, we've, we're like switching it up, doing places that we haven't gone to before. I think what I'm most excited about is Skipper Canteen at Magic Kingdom. We got a reservation there and um, we are going to San Angel Inn in Epcot. And, uh, San Angel Inn is one that uh, I remember when I was telling Brian about that. Brian was kind of just like, oh, okay, cool. But like 
we're pretty excited about about going there. And one of the big reasons for that is uh, I I know I just really enjoy seeing like a ride, like being right next to a ride. Uh, I always thought that it would be cool in Disneyland to be able to uh, eat at that uh, parts of the Caribbean restaurant that they have there, Blue Bayou, um, because you like literally the boats go by you and it's that si- same exact way with San and Hell Inn. Um, plus, like that pyramid just looks awesome, like just being inside that pyramid. Uh, but we have heard like not too stellar reviews in the past, but I feel like all the reviews that we've been seeing recently uh, have been pretty decent. And that's one thing that we that we try to do uh, is when we kind of decide where we want to eat um, or like while we're deciding where we want to eat, we will watch uh, like YouTube reviews and just see kind of what people are people are saying about the places. We'll watch uh, Paging Mr. Morrow. Um, he has some pretty good good things to say about uh, most of the places. So um, that is something that you can do like if you've never heard of a place or if you want to like kind of get the lowdown and understand like what you're going to be getting yourself into. That's That's definitely something that you can do. But how much do the reviews really matter? Because, come on, you're eating at Disney. <laughs> and I am not a fan of reading reviews for hardly anything, just, just because I feel like everyone, you know, has their own opinion and they can have very different opinions. So I'm not a picky eater as long as we're at Disney. I think it's just going to be a really good dining experience. Yeah, and we've we've said that before, where it's kind of like you're at Disney, like the the dining at Disney is going to be pretty decent no matter what. I mean, you're hard pressed to really go find like a bad restaurant at Disney. I mean, you definitely can. They're like they're out there, but um, yeah, for the most part, like I mean, you're at Disney, uh, and so that's one of the things that we were kind of looking at was especially with Santa Hill Inn was like that ambiance like what's the ambiance like plus we we love three caballeros uh like we we love that ride so being able to see that um those boats go by and everything uh, we're really excited about so looking at this uh from park to park um we'll start at kind of magic kingdom and how we kind of make our decisions And, and a lot of these decisions are right now based on like what haven't we done uh, and that's always, I mean, if you're, um, if you're a Disney fan, kind of like us, um, and you've gone a while, um, and you have certain places that you love going, uh, I would suggest branching out. Uh, that's kind of how I was, um, for a while I would go to Disney and I would go to all the same places because I knew them and, and I liked them and I knew that they were solid. Um, but recently I've kind of branched out and found some uh, really fun spots and it's just nice to know Disney that way and, and kind of like know all these uh, these spots out there so Magic Kingdom in itself isn't I mean amazing with dining uh, like like they don't have a lot of heavy hitters other than really um, be our guest in Cinderella's World Table uh, but they do have some like diamonds in the rough like Skipper Canteen um, and I mean I, th- I think I just watched a video about plaza and how like that's supposed to be pretty good um and so they do have uh some kind of like under the radar spots but um a lot of times when we're looking at dining at magic kingdom one of the things we'll take into account is how like what is our snack outlook (laughs) gonna be like like are we gonna go hard on snacks if so maybe we just do one quick service meal and like, and all of the other meals is just kind of like put together with snacks. Cause there's a lot of, there's a good amount of quick service there, but the snacks at uh, Magic Kingdom are like next level. So you can, you can literally just put together a meal just with snacks at Magic Kingdom. I agree. Um, I love the last two times well the, the only two trips that we've taken together um we have gotten um a dole whip and then watched um the enchanted tinky room and that could be like a meal for me like i would be totally happy with that um and with like all the attractions in Magic Kingdom, it's just so easy to mobile order a quick snack and then keep moving from 
attraction to attraction just to knock everything out in that park and do as much as you possibly can, which is usually how we do the parks. Yeah, it's hard for me to really kind of like sit down and let things take too much time. Uh, I'll do it 100%, um, especially in some of the parks like Epcot that just have amazing dining. But um, yeah, like you said, uh, we're usually kind of like sprinting from thing to thing. So uh, it's a lot easier at Magic Kingdom to just kind of like stop real quick, grab a snack and go. The, The last time we were there, we went, we just like walked up to the spring rolls cart and like my mind was blown because there was just nobody there and and we've been to disney a couple times where like the spring roll cart the line is just like an hour long um so that was kind of blowing my mind but yeah they're 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 kind of everywhere and and it's just like snack heaven out at magic kingdom so that's one thing that we try to keep in mind is um how snack heavy are we going to go uh but I mean, we, we've also had times where we've gone to be our guest and that definitely can become a pretty heavy meal. Um, and so we don't really do snacks that often if we're going to do something like that. But um, again, something that we keep in mind at uh, Magic Kingdom. So uh, on almost the complete flip side, um, Epcot. Uh, Epcot I mean, they're not really known for snacks, but they're definitely known for their restaurants um, in World Showcase. And their festivals. The upcoming trip that we are taking, we will be there during their food and wine festival, which I have never been and I haven't looked into um, any of like the food options that they have at the booths yet, but that will probably be some of the, the snacks that we'll, we will be eating during the day at Epcot. I have a feeling that Epcot's going to be a, a pretty heavy food and snack day for us. There's two ways to kind of go at Epcot. It's um, do sit-down meals uh, the whole time because you can easily find a bunch of really, really great sit-down meals. Uh, and that's actually usually how I have done it in the past is... Just book book a fancy sit down meal and um, just wait for that <laughs> the uh, during the day. So, uh, but yeah, with these festivals, um, you you kind of have to take that into account, kind of the same way as you do Magic Kingdom with snacks. Only uh, with these festivals, there's booths everywhere, and you can kind of like sample things here and there from uh, the different countries. And so that that's one thing that you can do also is just say like, hey. Instead of uh, like an actual sit down lunch, let's just go around the countries and uh, pick and choose uh, what we want from the countries. Um, and so that's that's definitely a way to do that as well. But um, the way that I do, I have most done Epcot with dining is finding that like really nice like really great dining experience back in world showcase um i think probably probably my my two favorites have been uh la salier when we went there and then um i believe it's tokyo dining um or i think it's it's like the Edo tokyo uh but it, they have like a hibachi grill um out in um japan so that was that was really cool. That was a while ago too, but um, we had a a really great time. And and these places at Epcot, these restaurants at Epcot, are just insane. Like they really like pull out all the stops. So that's probably like the thing that I would suggest most is if you're going to be going to Disney, and you're going to Epcot, and you're spending a good amount of time at Epcot. Um, look at this stuff early and and figure out where you'd want to go. And make that like probably your most, not like your most expensive, but like, um, like your, your, your fanciest, uh, dinner option, because there's a lot of places there that you can go that give you a really great experience. Yeah. We'll definitely have to report back to you guys at, um, how everything goes in Epcot, because like we said, we are going to San Angel Inn. We are going to hang out the out at the lounge um, at Space 220. We have um, all of the food and wine booths to check out the new um, connection 
cafe um, and creation cafe, I guess it's called. Um, we have that to possibly check out. Um, and I know something that we missed on our last, our last trip was, um, club cool, um, which isn't like a dining reservation, but it's still like a, a beverage option at Epcot. So we, we have to factor that into our day also. Um, so I'm a little nervous since we're going to have like two sit down things at Epcot and just trying to get everything else in just because we only have one day at Epcot, but that's just something that you'll have to take into consideration with any dining reservation, I guess, is your time in the park. Um, because that can take, you know, anywhere from like an hour to maybe more, um, to sit down and have a meal. And then obviously it's going to be more expensive than stopping at a quick service location. So just kind of what your budget is, you have to (laughs) weigh in all the factors. I mean, you're not going to go wrong with, um, doing a sit down dining reservation, um, at Disney. Um, but it's just kind of what your plans are for the trip. And definitely you have to make your dining reservations 60 days in advance to make sure that you get them. Otherwise, you'll have slim pickings. Yeah, and and I would say that we, uh, just as a couple, uh, and, and just kind of Disney people in general, uh, if you're a seasoned Disney veteran uh, and you've been going to the parks for a while, uh, it's an easier pill to swallow if you do have to kind of sit and um and take some time away from the parks at some of these these nice restaurants however if if this is one of your like if you're new to disney and you're just going to go once in a lifetime i i would suggest um i would suggest doing dining reservations however uh i would do it exactly the way that Kristen said where I mean, you can do quick service for maybe lunch and then for dinner, do a sit down restaurant Um, just because, again, these sit down restaurants do tend to take a little bit longer. It's nicer and it's nice to kind of get out of the sun. It's nice to eat some really great food, but they will take some time away from your park time. Uh, and, And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for park time. So uh, the next park that we'll talk about is Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I feel like Animal Kingdom doesn't have a lot of dining options. Uh, and they're, they're kind of, I mean, they're very spread out on the spectrum. There are some places that like can be like one of the the best places on property. And then there are some places that are just kind of like, eh. um, and there's just not a lot of them. So, uh, with Animal Kingdom, usually when I'm planning dining at Animal Kingdom, uh, unless I, I there's a place that I really want to go to, uh, like when we went and I booked Yak and Yeti, that was like the first time I'd ever been there. And that was like the one that we did. We did Yak and Yeti. We ended up actually walking into, uh, what was that? The lounge that we went to. Nomad Lounge. Uh, of course, <laughs> but, um, we ended up just walking up and getting into that. We didn't even make a reservation to that. Um, but that's kind of what I would suggest. Decent quick service options, um, around the park, uh, with Satulu Canteen. Um, that's pro- honestly probably one of the best quick services on property, uh, with, with the, uh, ambiance and everything that you get there, uh, and the food. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, for me, it's, it's, I definitely do quick service and maybe a dinner. Um, but I mean, I don't always do like a, like a sit down there. It's really gotta be like, if, if I'm excited to go somewhere, um, in the park, then, then I'll do a dinner. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's some really great places to go there, but I don't always have to have like a sit down meal, uh, at Animal Kingdom. Kyla, I don't know if it's that Animal Kingdom doesn't have a lot of options or if we just haven't explored all of the options. Um, But Animal Kingdom, for this upcoming trip, we are going to skip a sit-down restaurant and do a couple quick service. Going to get some some (laughs) maybe not so great comments, but I, I 
think that I'm going to talk Kylo into going to Pizza Fari because, I mean, I just love pizza. Um, and it would just be a quick stop that we could make. Um, and I've also seen some pretty great things about Flame Tree Barbecue. Um, so I think that that might be a stop that we also make at Animal Kingdom. Um, and then, like Kelo said, like Satuli Canteen is a great option. Um, and there's the Yak and Yeti Quick Service that we could check out as well. Um, so I'm excited about exploring more of the quick service options at Animal Kingdom. Yeah, and and you're totally right. Um, and it and it's not that there's not a lot going on there because there's definitely a a lot going on at Animal Kingdom when it comes to dining. Um, there's just not a lot that I mean I guess excites me. Uh, we could we have we've never been to Tiffins, we've never been to um, Tusker House stuff like that. Um, some of like the big heavy hitters, uh, but I I don't know I guess it's just never it's never been something that's kind of like pulled me there um i've just never been like i have just never really wanted to like get out and try those things maybe it's the vibe of animal kingdom like you're like in the jungle and then you're in um pandora and like maybe like that vibe you just don't think of like sitting down at a fancy restaurant um i don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah i get it a- animal kingdom definitely has it has a weird vibe for uh food anyways because it's just kind of like all over the board uh but there's there's some really good stuff there um and some really great options uh but we're, we're definitely going to be checking out the quick service side of things <laughs> when when we go so that's another that's another uh thing that you can do while deciding on your your dining options is do you need to sit down at the park uh like do you need a sit down restaurant because you can definitely go through disney just doing quick service and end up eating some some really great food uh and that can go actually for your entire uh vacation you don't you don't have to make an advanced dining reservation you can definitely have a great time eating the those quick service things uh it took me and my family a while to (laughs) figure out that advanced dining reservations existed i remember uh, our family walking up to the pavilion in japan and just being like oh uh could we get a table here and then kind of like laughing at us and being like uh no you usually have to do it with a, a, a reservation and we had not even thought about reservations um but yeah you you don't have to sit down at Disney. Quick service is definitely a really great option. So the last uh, park that we're going to talk about is Hollywood Studios. Uh, And again, um, not really known for their food, uh, but I feel like what they do have there, uh, the theme is is really great. Um, They've got things like 50s prime time and sci-fi dine-in. There's the brown derby. Uh, And then again, a lot of their quick service is like top notch and, and uh, very good. We are going to be going to sci-fi dine-in and that is a, it's supposed to be kind of like a, like a drive-in movie theater. Uh, so you kind of, you sit in these cars uh, and they bring you food and it's, it's kind of like a, it's like burgers and fries kind of. Um, so I'm excited about that part because I, I actually really enjoy uh, drive-in movie theaters. We haven't haven't gone to one yet this summer, but we should uh, make that a point to go out and um, experience that. Uh, but I, I'm excited about it, especially because of kind of the ambiance again that's that's happening there. Um, I've heard that the the menu itself just like isn't very diverse because uh, it really is <laughs> just like burgers and fries. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, and that'll be great for picky eaters who like really only want a burger or like only want like, uh, macaroni and cheese. When my brother was little, that's literally all he ate was <laughs> macaroni and cheese. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one. And, and the funny thing is, is this is a reservation that actually is pretty difficult to get because of the, uh, capacity at that, um, restaurant because they, they only have a certain number of cars. 
So like really uh, like a certain number of people can be eating there in one day and it's, it's a lot smaller than, than the other places. But yeah, there, there's other places like, um, docking bay seven, uh, that's back there in star Wars land. Um, they've got some really great food there. That's quick service. Uh, the Ronto wrap is like the staple of, um, uh, star Wars land back there. Um, we, every time we go, we have to have one and we actually, we have, um, we have a hot take, uh, on this, uh, Kristen, do you want to let them know what our hot take is? Our hot take is get the regular Ronto wrap. Our first trip, we uh, tried the breakfast one um, just because I think we had gotten it earlier on in the day. Um, I guess I was I was not a huge fan. I don't think Kylo was either. Um, but I mean, you might think differently it, depending on how much you like breakfast. Um it just didn't do it for me like the the regular Ronto wrap did. And we actually, Kylo tried uh, making a Ronto wrap at home. You can tell that we miss Disney and it's only been like a month and a half since we last were there. Yeah, I'm really excited about sci-fi um, dine-in because I honestly don't know the last time I've gone to a drive-in movie or if I've ever gone to a drive-in movie hint in Skylo, we need to go. <laughs> um, but I'm just really excited for the atmosphere there. Um, and for Hollywood Studios, I don't think our first trip, we actually did a sit down reservation there. Um, so this will be my first at Hollywood Studios and obviously not our last. We'll um, eventually try to filter through all of the options. Um, I've already got my eye on the next trip of going to um, Hollywood Brown Derby because I am just obsessed with the Cobb salad and I need to have it in my life. Yeah, Brown Derby is, um, I think <clears throat> Brown Derby is kind of like the sit down restaurant. Like that's kind of like the biggest restaurant they have. Um, and again, I mean, I've, I've done sit down restaurants at... Uh, Hollywood Studios, but I've never done Brown Derby, and it was just something that just never really kind of pulled me to it. But that that Cobb salad that you can get um, definitely looks really really cool, and the theming to that is kind of cool because it it's a restaurant that existed in California in Hollywood at one point. Um, so that that would be pretty cool to be able to kind of go and experience that. But um, but yeah, excited about the things that we're going to be doing at, at Hollywood Studios and, and really kind of like having that experience at uh, Sci-Fi Dine-In. Uh, I think that's that's definitely it's what I'm most excited about for dining when I, when I go to Disney um, this next time. But yeah, um, there's, there's different ways of um, hitting these parks when it comes to dining. Um, and it's it, there isn't any one way to do any one park. You can actually take... Uh, all of the different uh, ways that we're going at dining and you can use that um, at all of the parks really um, you can you can totally go ham and you can um, try to book as many sit-down restaurants as you can or you can be really light and uh, do all quick service or you can kind of have a hybrid of the two but um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is dining not at any of the parks um the the first uh segment that we'll talk about is disney springs because there are some amazing dining options at disney springs and i would be remiss if i did not mention chicken guy for my sister my sister literally cried inside of chicken guy at how reasonable those prices are uh, she may have had a couple drinks and that's probably why she was crying um, but that's, I mean, like, that's what she was seeing was she was seeing how reasonable these prices were and the chicken's really good. And, uh, you, you can choose all these sauces and the sauces are always really good. Um, I think Kristen and I have decided that it may turn into, um, just kind of what we do when we get to Disney property. Uh, after we check in, we go to Disney Springs and we have chicken guy <laughs> that might just end up being what we do. Um, but yeah, you, you've got quick service at, at Disney Springs. You've got 
Um, I mean, you've, you've kind of got everything. You've got Chicken Guy, which is like probably your like most basic quick service type meal. And then you've got a place like The Boathouse, which is like one of the more fancy restaurants that you can go to on Disney property. You've just kind of like got a whole lot uh, that you can uh, do there and, and, and just kind of like a full spectrum of, of food. Yeah, I'm excited to go to Disney Springs. Um, for our upcoming trip, we have a reservation at Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. Um, really excited about that. Get some hopefully good Southern food. We've seen a lot of good things about um, the food there and the pictures. It just looks amazing. Um, hopefully get to try out some drinks there as well. Um but I, that will be my first experience at um, Disney Springs for like a, a sit down restaurant. Um, I've been to Chicken Guy with Kylo and I think a couple years ago when I went with my um, sisters and my little brother and my nephew, um, we went to dun, 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 Rainforest Cafe, Kylo's favorite um, which I've been to a rainforest cafe in, um, near Six Flags, wherever that one is. Um, but I've never done any other sit down dining at, uh, Disney Springs. So I'm excited. Yeah. And I, I hope this is something I'm telling Kristen now for the first time, uh, yet today. Uh, I almost booked rainforest cafe for the end of the day at animal kingdom (laughs) i was seriously considering it uh because we had talked about the fact that we didn't really want to leave animal kingdom to go uh have dinner at disney springs which is something you can do you can definitely leave a park and have dinner somewhere especially uh, animal kingdom is the one that i i typically try to do that with because animal kingdom closes so early i mean like it, it closes at seven so if you leave the park at seven you've got all this time to do nothing with really um so i mean you can jump over to disney springs and you can have dinner or you can be like us and wander around the park for an hour until they actually kick you out uh that's usually what we try to do I am trying to save money on this upcoming trip with our dining because I know that um, with it being Halloween season, there's going to be a lot of things that we are probably going to end up buying. And now I just know it's going to be a struggle with Kylo because he wants to go to Rainforest Cafe. I mean, let's be real. Rainforest Cafe isn't that expensive. Would would that really kill us if we went to rain? We don't have to go to Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we don't have to do that. Um, I think honestly, at this point, um, I'd be hard pressed to find a reason to go to Rainforest Cafe just with all of the amazing dining that they have there. But may- maybe maybe one trip, I'm feeling nostalgic, and we end up eating at Rainforest Cafe. Maybe, um, but that would be like way in the future. Because there's plenty of other places that that we want to go to, but yeah, uh, Disney Springs, um, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Uh, we're we're gonna try to actually have an entire day at Disney Springs for this this upcoming trip, and so we'll see we'll see how that goes. But there's there's just plenty of things to do and plenty of places to eat uh, at Disney Springs. Um, they also do have have bars there. We're gonna try to go to uh, Jock Lindley's Hangar Bar, um, so that that should be pretty fun. So there's, I mean, there's lots of things to do, uh, lots of lots of dining to be had, um, and uh, yeah, there's just plenty of things to do. And I think I've said plenty of things to do enough times. So I just want to let you guys know that that there's plenty of things to do at disney springs and and plenty of eating to be had at disney springs so i think our last topic um for dining is the resorts um we are going to steakhouse 71 and kylo also surprised me and booked a breakfast at whispering canyon cafe at the wilderness um so we will see if we keep that one or not because I was looking forward to hanging out at the pool, but I also really love a good breakfast um, and 
probably can't go wrong at a Disney resort that I've never gone to. Um, So I'm excited just to go out and explore dining at the resorts more. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing. Um, I've literally, I've never done a breakfast. I I actually, that's a lie. I've done one breakfast at Disney and that was, I, I went with my, my buddy Jason and, um, we, we were just like taking Epcot super slow and we went th- went into the land and we went to Sunshine Seasons and we had breakfast there. And it was really good. It was really good breakfast. But that's the only time I've ever had breakfast. And it was with other people. It was not by my, my choice. If it was up to me, I, we would have been in line for Test Track or something, or something. But yeah, that's something I've never really done is have a breakfast. And I hear great, like like raving reviews about almost every breakfast at at Disney. Uh, I do hear that they're all fairly similar. I did pick Whispering Canyon Cafe because that one is different. It's not your typical, um, like Mickey waffles and, and sausages and stuff like that. Uh, so that's fun. They actually have, um, skillets, uh, which I'm kind of excited about, but, um, I mean, I, it's just something I've never experienced. And, and one thing you do have to take into account about breakfast, we're, we're doing breakfast on one of our days off. Breakfast will, again, take time out of your park day, or it may prolong you from getting to the park, uh, depending on when you do your your breakfast. Um, we tend to try to rope drop, and so we'll, we'll get to the park pretty much as early as we can get uh, and get into the park and just go straight to whatever ride we want to rope drop, usually Peter Pan's flight. But... Um, <laughs> If you're doing breakfast, there's a possibility that that will kind of derail your rope dropping experience. Um, if you're, if rope dropping is not a priority for you, then go for it. Do do breakfast on any day you want to do, because you cause again you can't go wrong with Disney breakfast. But understand that that's something that you may be missing out on is the rope dropping experience. I think the other thing to take into consideration with um, dining at resorts, and I know that Kylo and Brian have talked about this on the podcast before when you're comparing um, value resorts, moderate and deluxe resorts, is that the value resorts don't have a sit-down restaurant. So you are likely going to have to travel to one of the other resorts to um, have this experience. Um Places that we've already been to, California Grill at the Contemporary, 10 out of 10. I would go there every single trip if we could. Um, Just an amazing experience up there. Um, And we've also gone to Ohana at the Polynesian, which was also amazing. Um, Kind of like an all-you-can-eat family-style meal. So I'm excited to go back to the Contemporary to check out Steakhouse 71 and we'll also check out the Wilderness and then we plan on um, just resort hopping because that's something that Kylo loves doing so that we can check out all the other resorts and kind of see what they have to offer for our next trip. Yeah, like Kristen said, um, some amazing, amazing dining. I would have to say the best dining experience I've ever had just like not even just at Disney, the best dining experience I've ever had just in my life in general was at the Contemporary at California Grill. Like it was insane. Just, I loved every minute of it and it it just felt so lavish and, and it was so fun and it just felt really fancy. And it was funny to just see, yeah, it was the, the fanciest dining I've ever had. And it was funny to see how people were dressed and they were just fine with it. Um, there is technically a dress code. Uh, we dressed up, I'm kind of doing air quotes here. Um, we, we got, we got decently fancy for this meal. Uh, and there were definitely people there who (laughs) weren't. Um, and we, we were kind of surprised because we, we know that they do mention that there is a dress code there, but you do kind of have to understand that, um, it's, it, I mean, it, it's the park crowd. Um, like, we're, you're not going to be able to, unless it's like egregious. Like, like if somebody is wearing like like a tank top 
in little tiny shorts. Like they're probably not going to let them up there. But um, you you have to know that it's like the park crowd, uh, and and that goes for all of the other resorts or or, or really all of the other dining that's around there. There's only a couple places, um, cont- or, um, California Grill and Victoria and Alberts that really have an actual dress code. I'm pretty sure Victoria and Alberts they're much more of a stickler with their uh, dress code. But I mean, you'll, you're going to see park shorts and flip flops pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I think it's just kind of the times with the whole dress code um, of COVID that they might be a little bit lax because we definitely saw people wearing like graphic tees, which I'm pretty sure that was um, like against the dress code rules and other things that they were up there um, and obviously eating right with us um, at California Grill. It didn't bother me that much. I mean, we got a little fancy and it was, like Kylo said, like the best dining experience we ever had. I wish that I could remember our server's name because he was awesome. Um, Just like, oh my goodness, we had sparkling water at the restaurant that was included in our meal, which I for sure thought it was going to cost like $15 $15 for a bottle of sparkling water, but it didn't. It was part of the meal price, which is, you know, not cheap. It was like $89 a person, um, but totally worth it. Um, I'm also excited to check out at the resorts, like they're like quick service-y um, places. So we are staying at art of animation which is another value resort so they'll have like the cafeteria um, style food but when we resort hop I'm excited to check out the Riviera their coffee shop um, mainly just to get coffee and kind of check out the resort because that is one of the DVC resorts that I think is um, kind of the most bang for your buck if you if we were to sign up for DVC um, But all of the other resorts, Kylo wants to go to the the Rose Lounge at Grand Floridian, um, if that's what it's called, um, and check out um, that experience there. Is there anywhere that I'm missing that we were thinking about going to, Kylo, when we are um, resort hopping? Uh, Yeah, Enchanted Rose Lounge, that was kind of the one that I... Uh, really wanted to go to. I've peeked my head in there a couple of times uh, when we've been at Grand Floridian and it, it looks really cool. Um, uh, but I think that's... I forgot we were going to try to get back to Scat Cats Club at um, Port Orleans French Quarter. It's on that half of the hotel just because I want to go back and check out Riverside when we were just there in May for our special um, engagement trip we recently discovered that we want to start collecting some pins and I conveniently have this little cork board that we have hanging up Um, so I wanted to get one for Port Orleans Riverside because that's where we stayed in the royal princess rooms but they didn't have any pins when we went Um, and I've seen that they're back in stock now so I think that we might try to make a trip over there to get some beignets um, and hopefully get a pin from when we stayed there. Yeah and and that's something cool is that um, all of these these resorts, the deluxe resorts, and even some of the moderate resorts have uh, something special that they that they offer uh, when it comes to when it comes to dining and stuff like that. So um, that's another thing to kind of keep in mind is is where are you staying, and do you have some special dining experience that that you can um, that you can experience, or um, feel free to to go around to some of the other resorts and, and check out what, what they got going on. Um, they, they definitely want you to do that. <laughs> they, it, it's kind of something where if they can get you into the resort and see how amazing these resorts are, then maybe you'll stay there. And I, I, I mean, it's worked on me. I want to stay at all of the deluxe resorts. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think we've done a good job at, um, 
doing a little tour around uh, Disney and kind of giving uh, a good insight into how to attack dining and how we attack dining as a Disney couple. So um, I think this is a pretty good uh, episode. What do you think, Kristen? I think I'm getting better at doing the podcast with you guys. Um, I think we need to get me a microphone um, so I can hang out with you and Brian more and not pass the mic back and forth. But um, you guys can stay tuned to hear more from me on our future Disney trip um, and maybe other Disney things as the weeks go on. Yeah, we're definitely going to try to uh, vlog uh, parts of our Disney trip. So we'll try to be able to show you guys what we're doing and, uh, some of the great experiences that, that we're having. Uh, and you guys will have to fill us in on your favorite places to eat, um, where you like to go for sit down or quick service, um, or your favorite resorts or anywhere that you've eaten at Disney Springs. Brian would thank me for this. Yeah, that was really good. Good. I'm proud of you. That was so good. You usually I just let Brian do all of that stuff. But uh be sure to check us out on our Facebook Miles from Main Street um podcast and we do have a website Miles from Main St- Miles from Main ST.com. Check that out. Uh we've got all of our links there to all of our podcasts and and some blogs up there for you guys. Uh but like we always say, some live close but others don't. So let's talk about it. We'll see you next time on Miles from Main Street.